Now, Mrs. Robinson, please talk about your motivation for pursuing a career in psychiatric nursing, which you did after Mr. Robinson retired, right? Yes. Yes, okay. Um, I had, Jack didn't really want me to go to work. Uh, obviously, I was his companion everywhere. I, he loved to play golf. And he wanted me to ride in the golf cart while he played ball. <laughs> and I would do that. And I, I was studying because I wanted to go to graduate school. So I'd take my books and I'd climb in the golf cart and off we'd go. <laughs> so even in his leisure time, I was doing, and all he didn't sit with me on a beach, you know. I mean, you know, said that wasn't reciprocal. So he was accustomed to having me around. He was accustomed to having me greet him at home at night. Uh, we made a big thing about family dinners. Everybody had to be home for family dinners. And Sharon and the kids all remember our family dinners with the kind of conversation that goes on, the kinds of sharing. So being together was important. He thought if I had a career and was out of the house, all those things would fall apart. I wouldn't get there in time, and you know, uh, and he wouldn't have his this and whatever, and, and he was going to suffer. And I worried about it because I knew that he didn't just love me, he adored me. Yes. And I thought, what I'll lose is the adoration. Because I'll, I'll be, you know, so we, we really had to work on that idea. So we took it one step. When I went to graduate school, he was happy because he thought I was just, I wasn't getting enough stimulation at home. So that's why I wanted a career. So he would drive me down to NYU. I commuted from Stanford to New York every day wow. to go to graduate school. And he would come down and pick me up at the end of the day and take me back to Stanford. So he was participating that way. He did not think I was going to take a job, though. He, oh, he, uh -oh. he, he, <laughs> he really thought that this was, a, you know, the learning growth and the learning experience and developing and all those good things. Yes. And as soon as my youngest son, David, went to school in first grade, and he was in school all day, and Jack retired from baseball, that's when I went back, started working. I see. Uh, I Where went did in, you work? I, I went, first went to NYU and got my master's yes. in psychiatric nursing. I was always interested in mental health yes. and on the combination of the, the, the mind and body and the soul and all of those things. I was always concerned about trying to intervene and help uh, and be a helping person. So the psychiatric nursing drew me for those reasons. And... Um, I was good at it. And I went to Albert Einstein College of Medicine and worked in a research unit where we were taking in on a random basis, this was a research study, on a random basis out of the emergency room at Jacoby, people who were mentally ill who were going to be hospitalized. And we took them out of that pool and had them live at home and come to the day hospital. We started the first day hospital in America. Fantastic. And, um, and it was an experiment. I was there five years. In the five-year period, 80% of the patients that we brought from the emergency room could be maintained at home if you worked with the family and if you worked with the patient in terms of their behavior and their understanding of their situation and they're getting better. And many of them got better. And many, 80% 80 of those of them were got retained better. at home. Yes. Uh, now, when we when we were no longer with them, we don't know, you know the long-term follow-up, but it was very exciting for us to be able to, and I learned how to run groups and how to uh, work with patients in groups, and I learned activity therapies that I could, could transfer to another situation. So I was recruited by Yale University School of Nursing to become the dean of the, the not the dean, the director of the new mental health center. Uh, the community mental health center that Yale, that the state sponsored and Yale managed and, and supported. And how long uh, were you there? And I was Yale? there seven years oh. at Yale. Mm -hmm. uh, and I both taught and did the clinical work and, and the administrative work of being the director. I loved it. And yes. again, I was in a situation where we were using new modalities. I yes. mean, we had emergency treatment for mentally ill. We had all kind of supportive therapies, and we did have an inpatient unit, but even there, the, the, they didn't just sit around and act uh, up. They, they learned how to do things and learn how to manage and learn how to uh, relate to their families and all of that. So it was very exciting to be there and to be in a university setting. 
Oh, yes. It's crit critical oh, yes. to um, my own development and my own sense of being uh, a professional. And to have all those resources all that the university resources. like that will bring to you. Yes, it was an interdiscipl interdisciplinary group that ran that community center. And the doctors, social workers, nurses, and psychologists all worked together uh, in a very cordial way, I thought, um, because we were, we were there because we wanted to do something different and, and new and advance the, the treatment modality so that we had a common goal in that. Uh, and, and I loved those seven years. I didn't leave until Jack died. Oh, really? And then when Jack died, I couldn't go back. Oh, you couldn't. But how, during the time that you were there, how did you balance? Did you find that it was difficult to balance your career oh, with your family life? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> uh, it, it wasn't as easy as I thought it might have been. Um, and I had to train the family to expect me to do some things outside that I couldn't do, be at home the way I had been. Uh, I, all through graduate school, I bought all the reference books. I didn't have time to go to the library. Yes. I had to be home. Yes. So I bought all the reference books and bought them home, and I would study far into the night, but I couldn't start studying until Jack went to sleep, so we had our evening together <laughs> and whatever and whatever, and then when he's sound asleep at 3 o'clock in the morning, I'd get up and start my studying. And that's the only way I got through graduate school. And, and then you were I, in graduate school for about two years? Or? I was there two years. Two years, yes. yes. And, wow. um, and I did well there, and I was very pleased with what I learned and how I learned it and how I performed and encouraged because the first day back to NYU, I bought all these reference books, and I'm standing in front of the, the elevator getting ready to go up to class, and I dropped all the books. <laughs> I, I I pictured myself as this old lady. I was only in my 30s. <laughs> but old, old lady. lady. And these students come out of the elevator and sort of at me. <laughs> and I had to show them how old I was. I had to drop all my books. But it was an attitude. And I had thought if I'd stayed home any longer, I would have been, um, my mind would have deteriorated. I was really quite convinced of that. And so I really had to work at it. But, um, and then on the job, I didn't work after six. I mean, I didn't work late. I knew the family dinner. Now, sometimes there were meetings and things you just had to go to. Of course. And as I reported in my book that uh, I would come with my mother, we brought my mother to live with us because she wasn't happy out in California when all this action was going on in the East Northeast. Oh, yes. So she wanted to be with us, and it was wonderful for me because she would come, she would do the shopping, she'd do the cooking. <laughs> she was a caterer, after all. Oh, yes. And that's they right. had fancy meals, I mean, really the best. And Your since, father was deceased by that my time. My father was, had died, yes. and my grandmother had died. So yes. it freed her up to do this. Yes. And she needed to be with us, and we needed her uh, assistance and her presence. But when I'd come home, and I remember one night when Sharon was leaning out the window, she says, Daddy's been home in two hours, and <laughs> we haven't eaten. And, um, and I looked on the, we had a hot table, and, and I looked on the hot table, and the broccoli was gray. And this is a caterer's. I said, Ma, I mean, this is, you're undercutting me by putting the vegetables on before I walk in the door. You know, they all had to make adjustments of course to did. the changes. And the messages were always subtle, not so subtle sometimes, that you're doing the wrong thing, Rachel. You need to be here. And it, particularly because he was a diabetic, you know. Yes, and he had, your husband. He, he had, my husband was a yes. diabetic, and yes. he had to be fed on time, and he had to have certain oh. things in his diet, and blah, blah, blah. So if I wasn't there to do it, and my mother could do it very well, but if she thought I should have been there, then she'd just <laughs> mess up. That's all. <laughs> a little sabotage going. So until, we had, until we had a talk. And, and we never, that, that didn't happen again, because that very night we sat down at this, our dinner table, and I, after we, I said, now you notice the broccoli is gray, and it's supposed to be green. <laughs> and I couldn't get here on, uh, by 6 o'clock tonight, but you all could have gone ahead and eaten. <laughs> and if you, if you want, I've, I support you in everything you do. I go to your games. I was a brownie leader when Sharon was in, <laughs> when I was home. I had brownies. I had brownies and Girl Scouts and all that stuff. You did I've all done my part. Yes. Now it's your turn to support me, and I need it. I had to say I needed it because they didn't ever hear that from me, and I'm very reluctant to say what I need. 